Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this talk. I am Hamid Sattari from EPFS Switzerland, and today I am going to talk about silicon photonic MEMS at draft filter. First, I will talk about silicon photonic and optical MEMS. Then I will show you our design for MEMS at draft filter. Then I will elaborate on our fabrication process. And finally, I will share with you our inspection and characterization results. So silicon photonics, as we know, is an integrated photonic platform that uses silicon as optical waveguide medium. It has been developed considerably in last decade and various standardized silicon photonic platforms has been developed with high performance uh, PDK components such as high speed detectors and modulators. It is really promising for the emerging needs in data comm application, such as we all are familiar with high-speed transducers. Nevertheless, silicon photonic is also interesting for various other uh, applications, such as microwave photonics, uh, sensing, and LiDAR. To meet the limits of the emerging needs, uh, silicon photonics needs to scale up. It means that we need more compact and, uh, and power efficient devices. With the current components in silicon photonics, uh, it, it seems to be a bit elusive. The current modulators, they are either lossy or they become really bulky when we scale up the circuit. What would, what would be the solution for this? Optical MEMS seems to be uh, answer these questions. By integrating optical MEMS into silicon photonic platform, actually we can imply high effective index change in the component. This enables smaller components. And because optical MEMS, they are acting based on electrostatic force, there will be no current in the circuit and it enables low power components. Add to this, possibility of latching in the MEMS component that promises uh, for reconfigurable circuits in silicon photonics. The idea of integration of MEMS into silicon photonic, in fact, is not new. Uh, various components has been fabricated in silicon photonics, such as ring resonators and disc resonators for filtering and switching a purpose. Uh, there has been also platforms uh, realized uh, with, with two, uh, two device uh, uh, silicon photonic layers and for, uh, for, uh, for large scale uh, switching applications. Nevertheless, these devices are not realized in standardized uh, platform. So they cannot really enjoy uh, integration of the standardized silicon photonic uh, PDK components next to the optical MEMS. That is why in Morphic project, our aim is to integrate optical MEMS next to the standardized uh, PDK components of, uh, of the platform. In this project, we want to expand library of the components of uh, the IMEX EC50G platform by adding uh, optical MEMS components to it. This will enable wafer scale silicon photonic MEMS technology. And, uh, and this will promise for programmable photonic integrated cir circuits enabled by latchable uh, MEMS components. <clears throat> EC50G platform is a well-known and well-developed platform that has uh, high performance passive and active components. In Morphic project, we want to add uh, other active components uh, to this platform, such as switches and phase shifters. So far in last rounds of Morphic project, we have enabled a passive suspended directional coupler, compact phase shifter, MEMS directional coupler, and MEMS tip-to-tip -tip switches. Next to these components in this platform, you can actually add much more interesting other devices. One of them would be add draw filter that today I will talk about that. Addraw filters are essential components for wavelength division multiplexing um, um, action in telecommunication um, system. Uh, conventionally, addraw filtering is happening uh, by using a resonance system that, uh, that would be a ring resonator. By changing the geometry of the ring resonator, actually you can control the wavelength of the light in the drop port, and this way uh, you, you can route uh, 
the desired signal in the system. Our proposal is to using movable suspended uh, MEMS uh, ring resonator in the circuit to do this action. <clears throat> In next slide, you can see layout and also 3D uh, schematic of uh, our proposed at draw filter. So very similar to conventional ring resonator in at drop system, our, our device has four ports, input, through, drop, and add, and there is a ring resonator between, between the ports. So it has two directional couplers. The ring resonator is uh, suspended through two two anchors that they also play the role of the electrodes at the same time. If we focus, if we focus on the three-dimensional sketch, uh, we can see that the, our device is manufactured on a single layer silicon photonic, uh, the silicon photonic uh, platform. Uh, the thickness of the device layer is 214 nanometers. The optical layer is floating on top of uh, on top of a substrate with two micrometer uh, distance that is actually defined uh, by the sacrificial oxide layer beneath the device layer. We have uh, devised some electrical isolation trenches to make sure that upon the actuation, the rest of the circuit is stays in the ground voltage. To move the to move uh, to enable movement in our structure, we apply voltage between the substrate and the electrodes in the ring resonators, and the movements happens in the vertical direction. Upon the actuation, the gap between two directional couplers increases, and this way we can control the amplitude of the light uh, coupled to the drop port. This device has a footprint of 45 by 75 micrometer, that is a relatively compact footprint. <clears throat> to fabricate such a device, first of all, we, we generate a mask, we send the mask to iMake, iMake fabricates the devices and sends wafer to us, and we, we start a set of post-processing steps at EPFL Center of Microtechnology. When we receive the wafer, the back end of line um, uh, in the wafer is already deeply etched on the areas that we have optical MEMS. This is a standard uh, process step uh, at iMEC. This deep etching enables access to the optical MEMS that we want to finally release them and enable suspended devices. First of all, we, we deposit 15 nanometer of uh, alumina on top of our wafer to passivate uh, the wafer. With this layer, actually we protect uh, the components, uh, uh, the components uh, from the HF uh, vapor attack at the release step. Next, we need to remove this alumina layer on top of the optical MEMS in the areas that actually we want to give access to the HF vapor to etch down the box layer beneath the movable devices. After removing this alumina layer on top of the optical MEMS, we put our sample in hydrofluidic vapor chamber, uh, chamber and the etching of the box layer beneath the MEMS devices happens there and we realize suspended devices. Here you can see uh, some inspection results. In the optical image, you can see that our, uh, our device is integrated next to the some passives of the platform that is integrated uh, couplers that we will couple light from there. And, uh, and we have also a set of uh, contact paths that uh, they, are used to, they are used to actuate the device. You can see also sealing ring that later in our process, we will use to seal uh, the component. Uh, there are also apparent uh, the, the met metallization layers that are used for the electrical connections. As you can see here, the device is cleanly re released and the alignment between the wave guys are in excellent level. And here you can see the window that alumina layer is removed off uh, and this way uh, we have given access to the HF vapor to attack the oxide beneath the device. 
in the SEM picture, you can see uh, some residues uh, of, the, of the oxide from the HF release. To characterize such a device, we use a tunable laser and a DC power supply. The light is injected from laser uh, into a single mode fiber uh, in the fiber array. And after coupling to the chip and interacting with the device, the light is coupled back uh, to the fiber array and, uh, and routed to the detector. To actuate the device, uh, we use a set of probe tips and directly contact to the contact pads and uh, apply the voltage. We use a 3 degree of freedom chip mount and 6 degree of freedom fiber array mount uh, to do precise alignment between the fiber array and the grating couplers. <clears throat> Here you can see our uh, inspection results. In the left window, you see a spectrum of the drop port and through port in the off state. In the off state, that is as a release state of the device, we expect uh, to have a ring resonator well aligned with uh, with uh, with uh, with, uh, with two directional couplers. In this state, any light injected in the th input port will go to the drop port. Uh, not actually <laughs> any light. Uh, the light that me meets the resonance condition of the ring resonator. By applying a voltage to this system, we expect to have uh, uh, to, to have the a drop of the a drop of the power in the drop port, and to in to increase the light transfer to the through port. In the off state, we get over 20 dB port uh, extinction. By applying 27 volt uh, to uh, to to the device, we get over 50 dB of port isolation. Our ring resonator shows five nanometer of free spectral range. That is, uh, that is the number that we expected from our simulations. For the actuation curve in the right side, in the right figure, uh, we have the uh, we have actuation curve for two selected wavelength. One of them, that is 1552, is the resonance wavelength. The other one is 1549, that is off resonance wavelength. For both of these wavelength, we see that by applying 27 volts, we, we obtain uh, over 50 dB of port isolation. <clears throat> With this, I come to a conclusion. So we have realized the MEMS atrof filter in IMAX EC50G platform for the first time. Our post-processing steps are reliable and we can successfully release, uh, release the suspended uh, components. Port extensions of 20 dB and 50 dB are reported in the passive and active state of the device, respectively. This device is acting with 27 volts, that is relatively low voltage, and it has a compact uh, footprint. This way, this device enables uh, and promises for low power and compact integrated WDM systems. And we are looking forward to see our new designs and circuits in the next run of uh, the Morphic project. With this, I would acknowledge great uh, work of Morphic team and uh, dear co-authors, and thank you so much for your attention.